takes three guys who combine to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackie, who didn't do s***. This is the O-Line Committee. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Breaking news. Emergency players-only meeting episode. Yep. Do we, pull, we, we, we pull Booney out of the youth hey. hockey rink for this, Jay. Look at this right now. It, it always happens. We record we record a podcast, and then 12 hours later, a day later, breaking news hits. It's just dude. standard. It's just par for the course. We knew it was coming. My dude is going back, back to Cali. Cali, it's going to be so fun. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Dude, the breaking news. Yeah, if you're, I don't know, if you're, like, coming out of a dinner food coma or something and you just stumbled into YouTube, this is, A, the first time we've ever gone live on the o-line committee youtube channel so welcome hey, welcome bravo to us for venturing yeah we are oh. live so live. i'm glad we told you that yes we're live so the things you say <laughs> cannot be edited or looked at they are just streamed straight no filter streamed straight to the world this is how oh. we get canceled right now <laughs> dude we're in a youth hockey practice how bad could it get well uh, we're i've seen i've out. seen you try and dirt stomp a coach before so we'll see <laughs> So, Jim Harbaugh, breaking news tonight, leaves Michigan to be the next head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers, almost a decade after his last stint in the league. Alex Boone, by the way, you played several years for Jim Harbaugh in San Francisco. All four years he was there. And so let's just let's throw it to you to start here. What are the Chargers in for? Is this good or bad for the Chargers? Dear Chargers, number one. Oh, my God. It's about to go down. I'm telling you right now, you are going to love him. He has the best humor. He's going to come in right away and tell you exactly what's right and what's wrong. He knows everything right away. He is going to make you work your ass off Mm. every day. But guess what? When you work, you get better. And that was his biggest thing. And you're like, you know how people would be like, less is more? He would literally stand there and be like, less is more. More is more. More is more. <laughs> so we'd be like, and he'd come up, and, and you know the type of day, because he'd come in and be like, hey, more is more. And you'd be like, oh, he's going to split us down the middle. He's going to make us go over there. He's going to make them go over there. We're going to get double the amount of practice time in. He, would, he was such a scientist and genius just with time alone. Like, he knew how to value time. So he'd be like, hey. Instead of letting the defense stand around while the offense is going, let's make the defense go on that field the whole day. And I was like, oh, my God, someone's finally figured it out. And so rest time was cut to a minimum. Um, he always threatened to take us to Reno to make us practice. He'd be like, it's too cold here. It's too cold. I don't like it. He'd be like, you know what? Next year, next year we're going to Reno. I know the place. And so, like, eventually he said it enough that we were like, dude, he might be serious. And so we always get nervous. But he was the best, man. I'm telling you, he played. He understands the game. He knows how to do it. He's one of these guys. He's extremely cerebral, but he loves the toughness aspect of it. I will say the only thing that always bothered me about Jim was that he would always fine you for fights, whether you started it or not. Like, you got fined for being in a fight. And it was like, dude, that's just – it was like, but that when that's the only thing that you were like, ah, I just couldn't stand that, you're a hell of a coach. And the guy was very detail-oriented. He had another saying about, you know, uh, paranoid about being paranoid. And so, like, he'd always cover his bases. And he was always trying to, like, trick everybody into these things. And he'd have these great quotes written by Shakespeare. And one year he made us do this whole thing. <laughs> this, everybody on the team had to do one line from the um, on St. Crispin's Day. And so, like, the whole thing. And then the what? end of the Hold year. Hold on. Back up one more time. You all like did like a verbatim play and you all read it like line by line. He came into us like one by one and was like, he had a little recording box and he was like, hey, read this sentence. And he put it up to you. And so you'd read it. And then at the end of the year, it was everybody put together with all the highlights of the year. Dude, dude I know you what you're thinking. Cult shit. But it was awesome. <laughs> it was. Like you at the end of the year, you were like, yeah. Oh my. Like, cause you know, you got to go out and want to play for your coach. You got to go out like, like, Julian Edelman came out recently and said, you know, we worked for Bill, but we played for Tom. Dude, we played for Jim. There was no question. He was quick to be like, 
you're my wildlings and I'm your leader. And we were like, yes, let's do this. Because he was great about things. Like, he was like, I get recovery. I get you guys want to get your mind off this. But at the same time, as long as you work as hard as I know you can, I will give you all the time off you want. So it's basically like, hey, listen, the harder we go out here and crash each other, the more time off we get. So that's why he built this toughness aspect so quickly. Oh, and then just like Jay used to say, you have to build this callus. He'd come in and show you his calluses. He'd be like, look at this one. Look at this one. It fit it off. And his finger would be sitting like this, and he'd be like, look, look at that. You see that? That's a callus. That, that's how you get tough. And his, like, fingers were all crooked and shit. And it was like, oh, God, I can't look at it anymore. It's there. It's going to talk to me. I I'm just, I mean, I feel like he's the kind of guy at the combine. I hope we get to run into him at the combine first. Oh, of all. we are. We're doing, we're and I, I feel like he's going to be them. the kind, I feel like he's the kind of guy that like a recruit's going to walk in and he's going to have two pills in his hand. He's going to go, do you want the red pill or do you want the blue pill? And they'd be like, well, what do they do? And he's like, I don't know. You just tell me which pill you want. And then it's like, which they picked the wrong one. He's like, get out. Right, like that's the kind of guy. Like I feel like Jim, like he's like you were, you're, you were never gonna make it here anyways. But right? like, just like at the end, of, I just as you're talking about like the Shakespeare stuff, I also just start picturing like the exit meetings. Like, would you drink this Kool Aid if I gave it to you right now? And everyone oh, being like, yes, coach, yes, just <laughs> guzzling hey, it down. He is great at getting everybody to buy in. I'm telling you, and what he does too is he keeps like everybody accountable and makes them accountable for the next guy. So you're always kind of like checking on your buddy and you're always like, it's dude, it's, it, he was big in the military. So he'd always equate to like the SEAL teams. They're like, you got your buddies. You'd be like, oh yeah. And then dude, everything that he did was calculating and awesome and fun. And at the same time, when you worked really, really hard, you knew there was going to be a really, really big break or something fun at the end of the tunnel or hell, just a win. Like, dude, he valued the wins. And that's where like, what I say on our show a lot, like, a win is a win. That's where that came from, Jim. Like, he'd be like, hey, man, I get it. We're not going to always come out here and crush people. A win is a win. Let's get better. But at the same time, if he knew he had a team, dude, he, they were dead to rights. Like, he was like, here we go. Gas on the fire. Give him Frank Gore ten times more. Like, it was just, if we could run on a team, he was like, here, here play action would get going. And that was another thing. Like, I'm curious to see who he's going to bring in as an OC. Um, mm. obviously G Rose out there, right? Like, you are we are we bringing the band back together, my dude? Oh, didn't he? Girl. Greg Roman just interviewed somewhere a couple days ago. Well, now didn't he's he? gonna be interviewed somewhere else, but you got to think Vic Fangio's in Miami. I know Jim and no, Vic. dude. Well, Vic Fangio actually just he just went they to the mutually, Eagles. they mutually did. Oh, did they already <laughs> scoop him up? Yeah, the Eagle, it was like he wanted to go back home to Philly. Yeah. Well, I mean, Eagles basically cleaned house beside Sirianni, so that right. was. Yeah. Not, they were like, you're safe. Everyone else, get the scythe out. <laughs> like, just taking them down. I am interested, Boone. So you, I, I have a question for you. I'm going to interview you here because you're the Harbaugh yeah. expert. So everyone saw the Kaepernick and the gym, like, dynamic, right? The pounding yeah. on the shoulders and, and all of that. Herbert's not that guy, right? Like, Herbert runs away. Like, if you follow any of the Chargers, like, Instagram, like, he's running away from the camera he like dresses kickers up in his jersey so they film him and they run out and he like sneaks out on the back end like how does he work with a quarterback that's like that versus kind of the like pump you up in your face like he kind of was with McCarthy like what's that dynamic going to look like I'm going to be honest with you I feel like that's kind of how Alex Smith was before he got there and then when Jim got there Jim was more like hey man it's okay to be us and that's the one thing that people don't understand about Jim and I think they see him differently it's like they're like hey He's a real cocky dude, and he's a quarterback, and I've heard that from people before. And it's like, it's not that he's cocky, it's that he's confident. He knows what he's doing, he knows what he's saying, he believes in it. After listening to him for four years and then watching him work, you know for a fact he is the hardest worker in the room. So the minute he came in, he told Alex, like, hey, man, all this is shit. I'm here now. I'm your dude, and I'll fight for you. And I swear within, like, three months, Alex Smith was like, yeah, he's right. And that's when this, like, you kind of take on this persona of Jim because he's quick to be like, hey, baby, let it rip. Like the minute Alex didn't let it rip, he'd be like, let it rip. Let it go, man. You gotta just go, go, go. And it was like quick. It was like, but that's why you also learn like live by the sword, die by the sword. Eventually that let it rip is going to get you hurt. But Jim's the guy that's like, who cares, man? You have to take these shots. And when you have these amazing athletes are on the field and a great quarterback. And, I mean, you talk about the Chargers. They have some great players on that team. And the ability to come out and be able to finally, hopefully, run the ball a little bit and throw it. 
it's going to be super dynamic. I'm curious if he tries to draft Blake Corum or Donovan Edwards. I, I've already right? thought of it, Because Austin Eckler is kind of on the way out. He didn't have a great a year. Yeah, he's yeah. not a, a speeder. Like, I can see him either trying to target a big free agent. Now, we haven't even gotten to what the cap hell is. That is the Chargers. It's a problem. Like, yeah. It's an yeah. issue, right? Tom Telesco kicked the can down the road and then went, I'm going to go to the Raiders, right? Like, and so, <laughs> and so like, yeah. that'll be interesting. But I do think he's going to need to change the dynamic a little bit of that backfield because that's been a throw it, run yeah. and like just air it out, let it go. And he's going to bring a, he's going to bring a sense of a downhill running game there. But I think he does need to get a different back in there because Eckler is just not the between the tackles, hand it to him 20 times a game type of back. Think about it. With their run game, the last two years has been the screen game. That's yep. literally it. I mean, honestly, and that's their biggest problem. And that's what Jim's great at. He's great at coming in and drawing up the X's and the O's. He looks around and he goes, who's my Jimmy? Who's my Joe? All right, here we go. Like, literally, he is great at putting everybody in the perfect situation, scheming things up. He, Him and Giro were the first to make the, the motions and these Y flies super sexy. Like, dude, we used to go out, and I swear to God, we played a team. I'm not going to say who. Because it may be a little embarrassing to them. But it's also the state that Jeremiah is from, the city that Jeremiah is from. But we went out and played them one time, and G-Row was like, we're going to do four motions on this play. And we were kind of like, well, why? And he was like, because they shift every time we motion. We want to see if they'll actually do it four times. So we were like, <laughs> <laughs> so started laughing. I was literally in my stance for the entire 40 seconds, and I was like, just snap the fucking ball. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, they kept going back and forth. I could only picture Jiro and Jim just laughing their asses off, like, look at these idiots. They're going to end in the same one they started Ooh. in. Derek Henry to the Chargers. Ooh. Are you, Derek, is, this, is this your own speculation? Or are own getting... speculation. Okay. Own, I'm, I'm just thinking of downhill backs, right? Like, And who's a free agent, right? He's going to draft one, I think, for sure. But like, yeah. if he wants to get a dude like Derrick Henry is a free agent, the Saquon other free Barkley agent, is a free Saquon. Agent. That yeah. was the other one that popped in my brain. Dude, Saquon. But, but, Saquon. Dude, they're, but they're fifty-five million over the cap right now, and there's like you can do restructures. Take and... the can down <laughs> the road. <laughs> <laughs> they are gonna have to cut some people. Like, I mean, Bosa is probably reaching that point in his career where it's. Like, is he getting old? And the thing with D linemen always is you want to get rid of them before they have the down year. Right? That's always kind of been the trend with the D lineman. Is, and the thing with Bo, dude, he's always hurt. He's always hurt. But when he was healthy and you had him and Khalil Mack on those sides, like they were oh. racking up sacks. Like they were racking like up sacks for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah, the the cap casualties that are gonna happen over there. It's it's gonna happen and it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. There's gonna be some players that, that have to walk. Don't, don't you think that was part of the conversation too? Because he interviewed in Atlanta, which has a ton of cap space, yep. and they got weapons that well, you know. Okay, we're GM, interviewing right? for the job, and you're wondering what is the roster going to yeah, have? Look they like? gotten? Have they hired an actual GM yet? The Chargers? Yeah, yeah. I I don't think so. So basically, I bet you Jim the, said I want to have so a say in that. There it is, and it, yeah. that's how it goes. If they hire the GM first, then you know the GM's in charge because he's the one that finds the search for the head coach. If they make the head coach the hire first, then the head coach has basically said. I'm the boss, and he has to take orders from me. Or yep. he'll basically say, I have final say in everything. So the GM can help make this great team, but the head coach gets to look at it and go, uh-uh, get rid of him, bring him over. Dude, I'm telling you, and I'm not wrong with that. I always agreed with Jim, and he would pull me aside privately and ask me stuff about certain guys, and he would say, what do you think about this? And we, he, we always had the same mentality about everything. As long as it didn't disrupt the team, it's fine. Because people can make mistakes. People can have accidents. Life happens. We get it. But if it's going to disrupt the other 52 guys, Brody, it's time to roll. There is no question about that. Because he would every year start to talk about day one. He'd say the teams that won the championship the last 10 years in these four major sports, not one person would have gotten in trouble in the offseason. And he went back in the history and showed us. Wow. So the minute somebody got in trouble, he was kind of like in his mind, like, shit, this is a cancer. It's going to infect the team. Everything's going to go down. So, but there were times where he was like, you know, hey, this guy messed up. It's an accident. It's not going to affect anybody. He'll pay the consequences like everyone else. But, dude, Jim had some great morals, man. He was really a great dude. And he was the first one, honestly, in the NFL to be like, hey, families are important to me. Family should be important to you. We had family day every Saturday, walk through. It turned mm. into a carnival. And then the families <laughs> would all come eat with us. And then.
Oh, he's oh, gone. No, he lost him. He's gone. We right in the middle. Him. Right in the middle oh, of a, of a oh, go getter oh, story. On. There he is. There he is. He's back. So, he's back. So, so they'd bring like the families in for lunch, and then somehow everybody would end up in the locker room, and the coaches would get nervous, and they'd do the hard by like, oh, they're all family members. It's okay. What's gonna happen? Like, dude. And then when your kids didn't come, he'd like come up to you and be like, hey. I noticed Johnny wasn't at family day. What's up? I was like, oh, yeah, Johnny had uh, something with Dana. I don't know. He'd be like, make sure Johnny's here next week, okay? <laughs> dude, dude, here's the – here's the, like, I'm listening. To, you know, we're 15 minutes in here. By the way, click the like and the subscribe button if you please, haven't. We appreciate please, you guys please. hanging out with us here on the O-Line Committee. But, dude, like, you have spent the last 15 minutes, four years playing for him, describing this incredible team builder, culture builder – and yet on the outside, I feel like there's this, I don't know if it's from media, if but it is. it's this it sort is. of like people are afraid of him because he's a little quirky and he and and the perception he's, is he he's cantankerous and he burns bridges with front offices and like why but, why is there such a gap in your experience and the perception of him? Because number one, I played for him and I saw him day in and day out. And yeah, I will agree at times he got a little feisty with the media. But to be fair, we all did. And it was a lot of people that were kind of budging into our turf and kind of making statements towards Jim and the team. He's extremely loyal. So the minute you would call out one player from our team, he was quick to be like, excuse you? Like, who do you think you are talking about one of my players? Like, he's really the first coach that ever stood up and was like, you know what? I'm not going to do this with any of you. I'm just going to be stupid with you since you want to be stupid with me. Like, people would always be like, what's with all the stupid answers? You'd be like... Do you not realize he's not even taking it serious because he thinks that you're all a joke? Well, what because was that you're... last? He just had that last press conference. He was quoting uh, Ted Lasso. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like his last press conference, he was ta- he was quoting Ted Lasso in like one of his last press conferences at Michigan. He, he kind was... of is Ted Lasso. He kind of is, dude. He and kind of is. He's kind of corny, like he, marches he, to his own beat. He'd come in and talk about something that was written in the paper, and he'd call everybody scribes and pundits. He'd be like, well, the so-called experts, scribes, and pundits – have told us that we were wrong. <laughs> and like he'd get everybody all fired up and say, you'd be like, man, he just had such funny terms and he spoke so cool. But you know what it was? Now that I'm around a lot more vets, like crusty, crusty dudes, you realize that that's just what they are. They just don't care. They're going to be themselves. They don't care what you think. It's really kind of fun because you have to appreciate them. Like they're literally just being the most unique to them. And everyone's like, oh, they're so quirky. And you're like, that dude's so cool if you really sat down and talked to him because he was fascinating. He loved to talk about real issues going on in the world. We always had dinner with him. He always drank milk with dinner, whether it was chocolate or banana. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> He's dude, he drinking milk. You want to hear Wait, does he drink like, does he drink whole milk or oh, skim yeah, whole milk. 2%? Oh, whole milk. Whole, whole milk? milk all the way, dude. In the <laughs> out out of the carton or does he pour it into a glass? No, we used to have those big, like, you know, in like grade school, you had those milk container things. That you oh, push the, the smaller ones. Milk. And so yeah. he'd get a big glass of milk and have like a steak oh. and broccoli, but he'd make our kids come up and eat with us and he'd bring his kids. Like it was super chill, dude. We, and that's why he got us to be so loyal is because we were like, man, this guy is really the same guy all the time. Like he's really cool and he lets us hang out with our families when we want to. But one of the funniest stories, one day he wasn't there. And so Jim was never sick. I'm telling you right now, never sick. One day he wasn't there and everyone's like, yo, where's, uh, where's Jim? They're like, you know, Jim's not here. He had a little episode, you know, he's going to be okay though. So instantly we're like, a little episode, what, what the hell's going on? Episode. They're like, ah. yeah. They're like, you know, don't worry about it. You know, everything's fine. So we go to lunch, we come back and finally somebody found out that he had to get his heart shot back into, you know, rhythm. And so we're like, he's not, like, not going to be at practice. Seely's going to run practice today. So we were all kind of bumped out. We're going through practice. And all of a sudden, I swear to God, dude comes running on the field with his khakis and that black sweater, and it's all untucked. And untucked meant the job was done. <laughs> it never got untucked. He'd always tell us that. We don't get untucked until the job is done. So he's running on the field, completely untucked, looking like a goober. And all of a sudden, we're, we're, Sheely calls us up. He's like, all right, it's day. All of a sudden, Jim's like, man, ha! Ah, so excited I finally got here. He's telling us, he's like, you know, I, uh, I I told you that an apple a day keeps a doctor away, and I was wrong. <laughs> he was like, clearly. And out of the back of the, the whole team, everybody's outside. Like, the owner's out there, the whole team. The back, Navarro Bowman goes, hey, 
No excuse is a good excuse. Make it right. Because we had a saying that if you were late, somebody would just say, make it right. And Jim's always thing was, no excuse is a good excuse. And so some, and they find him, and he paid it. <laughs> he literally stood there and was like, you're, Navarro, you're so right. You are so right. No excuse is a good excuse. I'll pay that fine. I was like, dude, this guy's awesome. Dude, dude, tell, tell the story. Tell the story about the Seattle hotel he thought was bugged. <laughs> So yeah, that was an uh, early episode. Yep. Obviously, hey, obviously everybody knew that. Uh, everybody knew that we, us in Seattle, were we always hated each other, but we really all respected each other. But Jim and Pete, they respected each other. It was really tough matchups. And they had a phenomenal defense, and so every time we would go up to Seattle, it, we'd always meet in this one hotel room. Well, one year we <laughs> go in there, and we're walking in, and all the coaches are like, "Hey, listen, everything we say, it's the opposite." I'm like, what? Like, yeah, yeah. don't believe anything we're saying tonight. So we're like, okay, cool. And so Jim comes in and he's like, hey, guys. Like, you just couldn't wait. He was like, I, I, can't, I can't wait. The hotel is bugged. I know it, Pete, you're listening. <laughs> I hope you can fucking hear me. <laughs> I was like, this dude is the man. He's like, I just know it. I feel it. <laughs> I can sense that there are bugs in this room and they're trying to infect it. I was like, everyone's looking around like, hey. But in that moment, those games were so important for the NFL that we were all kind of looking around like, this room really might be bugged. Dude, and so when, he brainwashed all I'm, of you. Hey, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's just, it's every weird. single one of you. Listen, listen, and it listen. worked. They went to the Super Bowl. I know. Dude, no, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> we also used to leave fake play sheets behind. Because he was like, I know for a fact they're collecting them here. And so we would leave fake ones, and then we would leave the fake first 15. We'd leave a bunch of different versions. Dude, they were just diabolical. And that was one of their favorite words, diabolical, paranoid. You know, the more I think about it, we probably were a cult. These words Dude, are th not. This is, the, uh, this is like, and I'm just, now I'm all hopped up because you just told 25 minutes, but like, this is the best day of Justin Herbert's life today. He's not married. Oh, yeah. He's not married, so he doesn't have a wedding day. He doesn't have kids. Like this, this is the best day of Justin Herbert's life today. Think about all the quarterbacks that dude has elevated. Andrew Luck, Alex Smith was like almost out of the league as a starter, and yeah. then boom, all of a sudden, thirteen wins with you guys. Colin Kaepernick, JJ McCarthy might be a first round pick after you, the last dude, couple of years. He is the quarterback. Jeremiah, <laughs> okay, second round pick. Second, second round, round pick. Oh, look at Jiggins, that's man. the one thing. That's the one thing I'm upset about him going to the Chargers is now we don't get to see if he draft McCarthy or not. That's that's the one thing I'm upset about. I wanted I wanted to go to Atlanta and see if he would just go and, and pull the trigger on the best quarterback to ever. I'm leave just Michigan. letting you know that if you call his bluff, he will show you up. I'm just letting <laughs> he is that guy. All right, Jim, what pick you got? What pick do the Chargers oh, have? They have to have a top ten pick. They have the like fifth overall pick. They do have the All right, fifth Jim, pick. Yeah, put your nuts on the table. Put your nuts he's, on the table. Draft JJ McCarthy. He'd sit there and he'd somehow trade back, get JJ and the guy you want. I'm telling you, dude, he is a master magician. At one time, we had a guy that was kind of like, hey, we've been having too many practices in a row. And so he started to go back and count. And so he went to Harbaugh and was like, hey, we, we're having too many practices. And so Jim paused the session for the day to go back and look in his notes. And then he came out with the biggest J. You know the whiteboard we use in the gym? Yep, yep. He brought that out, and the entire thing had, like, a diagram of every day and counted the hours. And he was like, well, technically, we started on Tuesday at 5 p.m. And so all of a sudden, it was like, oh, shit, he's thought about this. And he was like, <laughs> and then we went, he's like, then we went Wednesday to 5 p.m. That's 24 hours. And he was like, dude, he had, they had thought everything through. But when you look back at it, you're like, dude, this guy came so prepared and so ready, and he knew everything about everything. Like, there was never a question that you asked him that he was like, I'll get back to you on that. Like, there were times in the offensive room where if somebody had a suggestion, they would throw it out there like, hey, maybe we should run Dino here. Maybe we should run a skinny pose. And he would stop and be like, Giro, what do you think? And it was – like, he never shot anything down right away. He was always quick to be like, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Or he'd be like, hey, Cap, what do you think? Hey, Alex, what do you think? Like, he was always quick to be like, what do you guys think? I'll, I divert to you, your opinions. You guys are running the show. He always let the offensive line make all the calls. 
he was always like whatever you know whatever makes you guys happy he was when we went to the super bowl he really loved the line he loved the shit out of us he was like hey i want to take you guys to dinner just an old line dinner like for everything you've done for us he's like we know how much this means to you guys and we battled all year with this run game and all this stuff like i'm telling you like no other coach other than the old line coaches I've had in this league have ever showed that much love to an offensive line ever in my entire career. He's a quarterback. And, he gives yeah, it. That, He's a quarterback. That's what you love about him is you're like, you're looking at him and you're like, but you weren't just some backup for 30 years. You were a badass. Like, dude, they used to pull clips up and this was, they were, they were notorious for this as the highlight reel was going. And we had some wild highlight reels. Like we were, <laughs> it was future would come to our games and play live every kickoff. I mean, dude, it was insane. <laughs> he was, he loved it. He came to us one time and goes, he goes, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if future's going to make it. We just pulled him out of a strip club at four in the morning. I don't know if the PJ can get here. Shit, <laughs> you not kick off this dude's walking out of the tunnel tony montana i was like we got him yeah we got him, <laughs> we got him. <laughs> we're all going nuts dude it was so fun but that's what made going to work fun was because you were like this guy's gonna be funny but he's gonna make me work a little bit but then he's gonna be funny again and then he's gonna bring future in he would bring everybody in that he could Dude, we had Arnold Schwarzenegger came in one time. We were best friends with Ric Flair because of him. <laughs> like, Ric Flair loved us, and Jim made him come to all our pregame speeches. He'd be like, hey, go, woo! You'd be like, oh, my God, it's him, it's him! <laughs> so then all of a sudden, all the pregame songs became all Ric Flair themed, and any Ric Flair lyrics, like, everything was just so fun. Harbaugh coming in and be like, yeah, I like that Ric Flair. I like that. <laughs> it was just so funny he was <laughs> such a cool dude but here listen diabolical i told you we get there and jay you remember how it used to be players always sat on the back of the plane and there yep. was a reason for that and we all knew the reason it was because they never wanted to see anything right ignorance is bliss i can't look behind me if i'm looking <laughs> ahead right that's how it was yes jim comes in and he goes hey i got a great idea i'm gonna move all the starters to the owner's class and we were like Oh, this sounds juicy, right? I'm going to put the backups in business economy, the big, the, just a little bit lesser. He's like, and I'm going to put us and the owners and everyone else in the back back. He's like, do what you want. <laughs> well, <laughs> quickly you realize that when you look out the road and you see the owner looking at you, you're like, I'm going to be good real quick. I'm gonna be really good. We thought we were going to have the time of our life. And quickly, everybody was like, oh, man, this is. Now, I will say this. Jim played, and he knows the rules. If you go out and beat the shit out of somebody, you're allowed to have a good time on the way home. So when those curtains got closed, it was like, hey, no one's looking up. We're all watching film. or reading our books. We're putting our wives to sleep. Like, dude. And at times, they would come up there, and you'd be like, Am I in trouble or are you trying to join? <laughs> it was awesome, dude. We had so much fun. We had Man. so much fun with him. I know. Dude, what percentage of the time is he wearing cleats? Oh, every day. Every day. Because he's like, like is he wearing slip. cleats just like at a, at a Wednesday practice? Like, yeah. like every practice, he's just wearing cleats? Yeah, and nobody thought anything of it. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it was like, that's my dude right there. If, it, if he had to go in and play, he, oh, I'll tell you another He's one. ready. This one's hilarious. Randy Moss comes to work out with us. And uh, so I'm at the facility. <laughs> I forget who they wanted to throw to him. It wasn't Alex or Cap. It was somebody else. And so they, they're out there throwing. And the word on the street was Jim was super pissed at how fast the balls were going to Randy. Like, he was like, hey, get it there faster. Deliver the ball. Like, I want to see if he's got those hands. So finally, Jim was like, ah, fuck it. I'll do it myself. <laughs> he starts <laughs> He goes under center and starts ripping the ball to Randy. Dude, I swear to God, I was like, this is amazing. He's like, Tay! Green <laughs> 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 Hot Randy. route! Hot <laughs> route! <laughs> He's looking at Randy like, do it. Do it. Go. Give me, Give me the, the hand. hand. Give, Give me the hand. Give me the hand. Hey, I saw the hand live, and they asked Randy one time, they were talking to him, and they were like, hey, Randy, you know, this play's great, man. It really is. But this guy's a big force cover safety. And he's going to come in here and make this play. Like, any chance you'd want to go in there and cut him? <laughs> Randy's like, hell yeah, I cut him. I cut <laughs> the shit out of him. 
<laughs> Jim, Jim, Jim just looks over. He's like, I love that guy. Dude, he was awesome. When he would get tired, he would like sniff Copenhagen. <laughs> it was crazy, dude. He was awesome to be I can't around. wait. I can't wait for the LA market and Jim it's Harbaugh. Gonna be, it's like, going to be it's awesome. Because if there's a fan base that needed some reinvigorating, right, it is LA. Right? I mean, they're – I, it was embarrassing to have to watch even the Rams, but every time the Chargers and the Rams were home, they're on silent cadence, oh. right? Like they're just at home. Like they just went silent all year long because everyone couldn't sell it to your own team. I think this could maybe be the jolt to get some more seats in the butts, butts in the seats, like the whole bit. Like that probably played a piece in this hire too of them wanting to get him there to try and reignite a fan base that's just kind yeah. of been lackluster. I mean, even when it was in San Diego, it wasn't the greatest fan base of all time. Uh, Easy, and I know you. And I know you I played, played there. there. I know you did, but I'll tell you what, dude. There was nothing like walking out underneath those seats, and you would see like the benches above you shaking, and you were like, "Please, God, just don't fall on me while walking." Dude, that's <laughs> Qualcomm. <laughs> Qualcomm was a was death trap. Best. That place was a death trap. You were just oh, waiting for it. something to break. San Diego <laughs> Supercharger. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, he's had Dude, so much fun. Five, hey, five wins, five wins last year for, for the Chargers. They did win 10 games the year before, so they won five games. I think they double their win total minimum. I think it's like an 11-win team. Time out, and this is what I'm glad we're getting into. You not only have just elevated this entire AFC, but the AFC West now is going to be electric. Like You talk about Antonio Pierce being hired out in – uh, Las Vegas, and by the way, they wanted him, and I am all about that hire. He is the perfect guy for that team. He brought them back this year after they had to deal with tons of turmoil. But then you talk about Andy Reid in Kansas City. They're clearly still fucking at a high level. And now you're going to have Jim Harbaugh in L.A. Dude, this AFC West has just put a ton of pressure on the Broncos. Mm. Like, hey, you better pick your shit up, because if you don't, the rest of us are going up here. I'm telling you. Could I see a 10-win season? Absolutely. I could see even higher because you don't understand how infectious he is to be like, hey, listen, whatever's happened before is water under the bridge. I don't care. I'm not looking. I'm looking from right now on. And if you get in my way, I will steamroll you. The simplest way possible. And in four weeks, you wait to see that team. They're going to be like, dude, I'm all in. I'm bought in and I'm ready to take the West. It's going to be so fun. to Harbaugh's Harbaugh the Mahomes killer. Is dude. Harbaugh the Mahomes killer? Dude. Oh, hey. Oh, no. oh God. It's going to be so electric. <laughs> I can't wait. I cannot wait. You I, guys, dude, you guys were the were the Aaron Rodgers killer. Not in the division, but in the NFC, right? I mean, yeah. didn't you beat Aaron Rodgers like two or three times with Harbaugh? The Cappers, the Kaepernick piss. run games? Oh, we used to be the piss out of the Packers. We started every <laughs> season, and then we started every playoff with them. We used to be like, hey, he used to come in and be like, hey, we kick-started their season. Now we're about to end it. We were like, yeah, we are. <laughs> we were all about it, dude. It was great. I loved it. I'm we went one year, and we, that was the polar vortex. Phil Dawson kicked a field goal to win it. Dude, it was insane. Jim was, like, wearing no sleeves. He's all about it, throwing the dude, ball Dude, here's around. what needs to happen. So we already saw one defensive coordinator, one of his guys, right? Vic Fangio went from Dolphins to Eagles. How about Jim Harbaugh poaches Jim Schwartz? from Cleveland. <laughs> Let's bring it full circle. The back slapping incident. Get him on board. Let's make this happen. I want to be on that coaching staff. I do. I, I want to be the O-line coach on that coaching staff. Sorry, Nick Hardwick. I know you called over recently. <laughs> asked. I'm putting my name in now, dude. No. No. I need, you. I need you in Minneapolis trading the boys. You're not allowed to go anywhere else. I'm, I'm kidding. Jim, I'll see you at the combine. I cannot wait. I cannot fucking wait. Oh, Dude. it's going to be so electric. Dude. All right. Let's let Booney get back to uh, this youth hockey action here in front of him. Give us some play-by-play. -play. What's happening out there right now? Right. They're having a long conversation about something. I don't know. These coaches. <laughs> know. Jim would never. Jim would no, never. No. I'm going to tell you right now. Jim would never <laughs> let these girls take a knee for a second. He came out here 10 times more prepared than any of these coaches. Like, okay. All right, girls. Listen. Listen. Here's how it's going to go. <laughs> Love that guy. Can't wait. Oh, shit. amazing dude. Wow. Jim Harbaugh, Los Angeles Chargers. Let's get it out. If Andy Reid doesn't retire, and you guys kind of, which I one of you guys? It was Jay? me. It was me. If I he doesn't retire, this. though, in the same division, you got Andy Reid, Sean Payton, Jim Harbaugh, and then Antonio, Antonio Pierce took that job today. Crazy, man.
world's on fire. Yeah, it is. Can't wait. All right, dude. Booney, thanks for the stories. Great stuff. Appreciate you guys. Hey, and if you're hanging out with us here live, uh, click that like button, the subscribe button here, and help us grow the O-Line Committee. This has been an emergency players-only meeting episode. We'll see you guys. Who's got it better than us? Nobody. Nobody!